Okay, good afternoon everyone. So this week um, we're going to keep looking at WordPress and I'll continue on from the point where we basically left off the last time we were looking at WordPress. So, <clears throat> so last time um, we started to look at um, creating a WordPress theme from scratch and we pretty much got as far as creating um, or going from a, a static layout and splitting that off into creating a header and a footer and a sidebar and then just having our one template, um, our one index.php template file that we use to display all the content. Um, so I'm pretty much going to use that, uh, those e exact files um, that, that we left off with last time, but I have made some changes to the content of the site. Just so that um, just so that I have some content to be able to demonstrate um, some things for you today. So, um, so I've added a whole bunch of posts, and the main thing that I want to demonstrate today is how we <coughs> can create templates um, to display um, just different categories of posts. Okay, so we'll start looking at how you can split your your content up into different sections of your website by using categories and tags, and then how you create templates for displaying them perhaps differently to how you might display other content. So in order to do that, I've just got some very simple content. I've created a bunch of, of posts um, in two categories. Okay, cats and dogs. Okay, and I've just got an image and and some text that I ripped off Wikipedia um, a feature of these. Okay, so essentially my, my website's going to categorize my content into those two categories, cats and dogs, and then I'm going to have a third category uh, for blog posts. Okay, so which will just be whatever. So essentially what I want is for my site to be able to display my, um, display my, my cats and my dogs category of posts in a certain way that's different, um, more suitable to the content than, than the normal blog post. Um, also, I've under my pages created um, an about me page and a home page, which I'll use um, to replace the default home page, <laughs> with um, uh, with which is normally just shows all of the posts. Okay, and I'm going to use uh, just replace it with a static front page. Uh, in terms of my uh, post taxonomy. You notice here under the post that the categories and tags I've used are listed here. Okay, so we've got categories, cats, dogs, and blog. And for tags, I've tagged whether they're in the dogs or the cats category as either short hair or long hair. Okay, so two different ways of, of categorizing or, or um, tagging my content. I can also look and see the categories in here and the tags in here. Um, in terms of uh, applying a post to a particular category or a tag, okay, in the edit post screen we simply use this interface here where we can check box to assign it to a particular category and even add a new category here. I can, if I want, have subcategories um, of, of categories as well. Uh, in this case I just have one level. And then tags here work slightly different. Tags here works just like tags would work on Instagram or something like that. Okay, you just type the name in. And um, if, if I've used them before, okay, it will come up and, and suggest um, a tag to use as well. Okay, so you can add as many tags to your post as you want. Okay, and so the difference between ta tags and categories is that categories work essentially hierarchically. Okay, if you just want things to show up in a category, then you use a category, but tags can work across categories. So I should be able to s write a template that says show me all of the posts that are tagged with short hair, whether they're a dog or a cat. Whereas if I just click on dogs or cats, it's just going to show me the um, posts in those categories. Okay, so that's how I've structured my content. Um, at the moment, um, the site, because it just has my uh, one index.php template, okay, is just the, def the front page is by default just showing all of my posts in reverse chronological order like this. Okay, so I've got my blog posts and my cat and my dog posts all in together. Um, so that's one thing I want to change. Um, the, the other thing I want to change, um, first of all, is I actually want to um, set this um, front page up so that it's not my blog listing. I want to create what's called a static front page. 
Um, the other thing I might just draw your attention to at this point is I've got this useful little development plugin that shows me here actually what template is being used. Um, that plugin is called um, Show Current Template. Okay, and it's quite useful. It puts the it tells you the name of the template that's being used to display the content on the page. So this helps out with figuring out which template is WordPress going to select to display a particular type of content for me. Um, okay, so sorry, I should mention as well. I do have notes up um, on my blog as usual for this week on week six, and I've got a bunch of information here which I'll I'll cover most of this. Maybe not necessarily in the order that it's written, but um, but it's there for you to refer back to later on. Um, so the first thing I might look at is um, actually let's look at let's look at um, implementing user customizable menus first of all. Okay, so um, in where we left off with developing this template previously, I still just had this menu left over from my static version of the, the web page, okay? So these don't do anything, they're attempting to link to HTML pages and they're hard coded into my uh, header section of my site. Okay, so that's my navigation code there. Um, so what I really want to do is um, be able to have a dynamic menu which I can set up in the WordPress backend and so that when I change the menu structure I don't have to come back into my template and modify the code there. So before about WordPress version 2.8, we didn't have as much control over the menu. All you could really do was list out um, either all the pages in your site or all the categories. Um, but since since then, since WordPress 2.8, um, we've actually been able to use um, this an interface that looks like this in the WordPress backend. <coughs> Okay, which actually will allow us to create a custom menu with any combination of categories, um, pages, and other custom links we might want to use. But in order to get that to work, we have to do a little bit of setup. Um, so I've got a few links on different articles about setting up custom menus in WordPress. Uh, the one I'm going to refer to most is this third one here. Okay, um, and this will tell us the, the various steps that we have to go through to set this up. Um, now, it can be a little bit confusing because you might be used to using custom menus with a, um, a different theme installed and, and they might work. Um, so if I, if I just go back and let me um, activate a, one of WordPress's themes here, okay, so a very complete theme like this. Okay, then you'll see that I can come to appearance and it's got um, a section here um, for menus. Okay, however, if I go and reactivate the test theme that I'm creating, you'll notice that that disappears. Okay, and that's because we have to have some setup code in our um, theme in, in order for that to appear first of all. Okay, so that's one thing that can be confusing as to um, where, where that actually disappears to. Okay, but it's quite easy to set up. Um, what we need to do is um, register the menus by putting some um, uh, some calls to WordPress functions here in a in a file in our theme directory called functions.php. Okay, so all of the PHP files that we've put in our um, theme directory so far are template files. Okay, they represent actual parts of the page that will be um, output to the web browser. Um, the functions.php file is slightly different in that it doesn't actually represent a template, um, but it's just a place where we can put any other code that we might want to um, use in, in our template files, and it's the place where we put a lot of the setup code for WordPress features. So I'm just going to create um, a new file in my theme directory called functions.php. Okay, and for reasons that um, are a little obscure and not necessarily worth going into, though you can research them if you want, they recommend that the functions PHP file, you actually don't close off the second PHP tag. 
Okay, because what, what can happen is if you accidentally have spaces or characters past the end of that, it will, for obscure reasons, um, create errors in WordPress. So this is probably the one area where um, it's recommended that you just have the opening PHP tag and you don't close it off. Um, okay, but the functions.php file, now that's there, I can put in the code which will tell WordPress that I, I want to use the custom menu functionality in this theme. Okay, and I do it um, using either of these blocks of code here. Okay, so these essentially, this block here and this block do the same thing. It's just that this one sets up a single menu and this one sets up multiple menus. Okay, so I could use either of these, but I'll use this one just to show you that you can set up multiple menus. All right, and I'm going to copy and paste that into my functions.php file. So you'll see this sort of um, pattern of code for setting up things in WordPress a fair bit. You'll, you'll have a function that you, de that you declare, and then you'll have this call to a WordPress function called add action. And basically, this calls your function, but the first parameter here determines when in the startup process of WordPress loading all its components to actually do this. Okay, and so this is this init here is performed um, quite early on. Okay, um, you can look into that more if you want by looking at the add action function, but generally any documentation where you need to set up something in the functions.php file will tell you what exactly what to write here anyway. Okay, so this is the function which will actually um, register those menus. Okay, so this is a WordPress function called register nav menus. And then so the parameters are split up across a few lines here, but we pass it an array with um, basically identifiers to the menus that we want to create. So each of these lines represents a, a menu, um, or what, what WordPress calls a menu location that we can create. Okay, and, and, um, and so it looks like this. Okay, so this one is going to be called header menu and this one's going to be called extra menu. And um, I'll show you where this part of it becomes important um, when we actually output the menu into the template. But this is what the menu will be called up here as in the WordPress backend. Okay, so I'll save that. And again, just um, I should make it clear that I've got it set up so every time I'm saving, making changes here, they're automatically being uploaded to my server. Okay, so they should should now be on the server. Um, I should be able to now refresh the WordPress backend, okay, and I now get an extra option under appearance here for the menus. Okay, so I can now click on that and I get a page that looks like this. Now, this these menu items are, are here already because I set this up once before in the last class that I did, but I'll, I can delete that and do it again. Okay, so this is what it will look like um, by default as soon as you set it up because you won't have created any menus yet. So what you need to do is first of all give the menu a name. Okay, so this is the menu that I want to replace essentially um, let me just refresh that. This with here, okay, so I only really have one menu on this page and it's going to be my main menu so I'll call it main. And you hit create menu Okay, and then the menu structure here you build up based on any content that's available over here. So as you can see, we can add pages. So I can add the home page and the about me page to the menu. Okay, they get put over there. Um, I can add categories to the menu. Okay, so I want to be able to click on links to my cats, dogs, and blog categories. So I'll add all those to the menu. Okay, and you can also add um, external links to the menu as well. Okay, so let's just say for the sake of argument, I want to create a link to um, the RSPCA's Adopt a Pet website. Okay, so I suck my users in with cute pictures of cats and dogs and then tell them to go adopt a pet. Um, I can just paste the URL to an external site in here. Okay, and then put the title of the menu item here and then add that to the menu as well. 
Now, you notice none of these other ones I put in a menu item title. The menu item title is derived from what either the page name or the category name is called. But you can always come back here and change that if you want. So let's just say I wanted the blog category menu item to appear as news. I can always come in here okay, and change that there if I want. Okay, but I'll, I'll leave that as it is. Okay, so that's how we create a custom menu, then we save that menu. Um, sorry, actually, before I save that menu, there is one last thing that we need to do. Um, we have to assign this menu to a theme location. Okay, and you'll notice that these theme locations here, okay, are exactly the two that I created here. Okay, header menu and extra menu. Alright, so I'm going to um, assign this main menu to a theme location header menu here by checking that box. Hit save menu. Okay, and now when I output the header menu location in my template, this menu is the one that's going to be output there. Um, okay, so there is one more step and I actually have to write some code into my um, template file to tell it to output this menu now. So I'm going to go over to my header.php um, template here where I have my navigation and I'm going to remove the static navigation that I have and I'm going to replace it with okay this bit of code here. So on that same documentation page just below the setup code okay, it tells me how to display the menu on a theme Okay, and the code for that essentially looks like this. It's a PHP call to a WordPress function called WP Nav Menu, and then I pass it an array with a index of theme location, and then that value for that there needs to match one of the theme locations that I've set up here. Okay, so that's where this part of that setup code comes in. So I copy that across put that in my header.php where I want my menu to be output. Okay, and so that bit of text there, all right, needs to match one of these two locations. Now if I set it to extra, me extra menu, I haven't assigned any menu in WordPress to that theme location, so nothing will output. But I have assigned my main menu to this header menu location, so I can use that in here. Okay, and that should output my main menu that I've created in my WordPress backend. And so that's dynamic now. Any changes that I go and make to the menu will automatically update without me having to come back and change this code here. All right, so let's see if that's worked. Make sure the menu's saved. Go back to the site and hit refresh. Okay, and there's my dynamic menu output here. Okay, obviously it's not being styled the same as my old menu. Okay, and that's just because the the HTML and the and the classes that are output might be different to what I was expecting when I was creating this as a static page. Okay, but it has output a bunch of list items which link to my different content. Okay, there's the home page, the about me page, the link to the cats category, the link to the dogs category. Um the blog and the link to the external website. Okay, so they're all functional links. I just have to fix up my style so that I, I style this now in the way that I want. And the easiest way to do that is, I would say, to um, inspect that code that's output there in your um, um, browser development tools. Okay, so Basically, this is the top-level container that that PHP uh, that that sorry that that um, function called to output the menus is putting there. Okay, so you can see it's given me a div with a class of menu main container, and that main is going to be pulled from whatever I've called it in here. Okay, so if I change the name for that there, that's going to affect the class names that are applied there. Then I have an unordered list, okay, with some ID and classes and list items. So knowing that, knowing what the structure is and knowing the class items there, I can go and modify my CSS style so that it targets those 
particular um, classes correctly. Okay, so rather than um, typing that in line by line, I'm just going to copy those new styles over from my completed example. So let me just find. Alright, so this will be the styles for my navigation menu down to there. Okay, so my styles are really the same. All I'm doing is making sure that the um, that the classes that are being pointed to are correct. Okay, because in my old version of my old version of my static website, okay, I'd called given my things um, ID names like Navinner and stuff like that. Okay, so they're obviously no longer linking up. I probably do want to go through and. Um, remove these old menu styles okay because they're no longer necessary all right and I've got the new ones down here now so hopefully they should now match up nicely okay so there's now my correctly styled menu okay but with the dynamic menu that WordPress is outputting not the static one that I originally created Okay, and just to show you the dynamic nature of this, okay, I can come around and um, reorganize these. So let's say um, I want the About Me to be at the end. I can just come through and save that without modifying the template. Okay, I can refresh and that will be there. And if I decide to add a new category of content to my page at some point, I just go into the into this interface here and add that again to the menu and I don't have to worry about modifying any PHP code. Um, you can also create multiple level menus here so let's say I wanted to have the about me um, appear as a sub menu under home. Okay, I can just drag it like that so it sits slightly to the right there and again as long as you've um, got the, the styles to style the sub menus in your CSS okay, that will show up like and work correctly like that. Okay, but for me, I just want a one-level menu, so I'm just going to keep it like that. Okay, so that's custom menus. Um, so now I now I am actually able to um, visit all the sections of my site, but I still have it such that the if I just go to the main URL, okay, it's not actually showing me my home page. Okay, it's still showing me the default, um, just listing all of my post items in reverse chronological order. So what I actually want it to do is to have, when I go to my default URL, actually show the home page here, like this, without actually having to type in that URL. So in order to do that, it's quite easy. All I do is in my, um, in my WordPress uh, admin section, I'm going to go down to um, settings here and um, reading. Oh, it's locked me out. I have to remember my password. Okay, so I'll go down to settings here and reading. Okay, and you can see the first option here says it asks me what do I want the front page to display. Okay, and as you can see the default here is your latest post, but you can set it to any page that you've created in the pages section of WordPress as well. Okay, so I'll, I'll select that and then I can say as my front page, set it to this page I've created with the title of home. Okay, and then if I do want another page to show all of my posts, Okay, in all categories, then I could select another page to do that as well. But in this case, I don't. I don't have any section on my site where I want to show all of this content at the same time. Okay, so I'm setting my front page to that home page there, and I'll hit Save Changes. Okay, and now when I go to my default URL, okay, it comes up with that home page. All right, and then I can navigate to all the other sections using the menu there.
Okay, so now notice that I'm still, even though I've got all of these different sections, okay, a home page and category pages, they're all still just using the index.php file, okay, because that's the only template file that I have. Okay, and as we see in the WordPress template hierarchy, Okay, the index file, index.php file is the one, the last one that that it falls back to if no other more specific templates exist. Okay, so now what? I, now all I need to do is if I want to, um, if I want to have any of these pages um, laid out differently. Okay, all I all I have to do is create a more specific template that relates to those um, that that's more specific than index.php. So we'll start with a simple one. Let's say, for example, on the um, the home page. Okay, you'll notice that in the index.php template. Okay, one of the first things I'm doing is outputting the title of the page. Okay, so that's where it gets home from there, and on sorry, on about me, that's where it gets about me from there. Okay, but on my home page here, I actually have within the page content. Okay, I have a big heading to with welcome there. Now, I don't really want both of these to show up, and I think that home being there is kind of redundant because it's obvious when you're on the home page. Okay, that's highlighted, and also I've just come to the site or I've just clicked that. So, what I really want to do is have this. Just be very slightly different to the index.php template, but just don't output the title of the page. So in order to do that, I can make use of the WordPress template hierarchy, and I can see that. Just have to find this first. Okay, so when it's deciding what what template to use, okay, if if it is if it's the the front page of the site, then I can create a template file called front-page.php. And if that exists in my theme, it will use that before it decides to use index.php. Okay, so WordPress knows that I'm viewing the front page of my site. Okay, it knows what, what I'm viewing. When I'm viewing a category, it knows that I'm viewing a category. Okay, so it will go through and look for that front page.php file to see that it exists. And it's only because it doesn't exist that it's falling back to the index.php file. So what I'm going to do is my front page template is going to be almost identical to my index.php template. The only thing is I'm just going to not output this title. So the quickest way to do this is to just duplicate the index.php file. Okay, and I'll rename this front-page.php. Okay, and the only change I'm going to make is I'm not going to output the page title. Okay, so this whole heading 2 with the link to that page and the page title, I'm just going to delete that from my, sorry, not from the index. I'm going to delete that from the front page.php file. Okay, so now when I refresh this, what you should notice is, as well as this changing, but this should then tell me that it's using front page.php. Okay, and there it is. Okay, so it's using frontpage.php, which no longer outputs the title of that page. Whereas everything else, because it's not the front page of the site, is still using index.php. Okay. Um, all right, now, the next thing that we might branch out into is... Okay, so we could um, create. Well, actually, what we might do, we did do this last time, but I'll do it again, be, um, just because it fits in with this stuff. Is creating a separate um, template for when we click on a single post. Okay, so it doesn't matter what category we're in. Okay, any of these, I can click on a single post, just dis display the single post by itself. Okay, and let's just say maybe in the single post I don't want to display the sidebar. 
Okay, so what I can do is again using the WordPress template hierarchy. Okay, um, somewhere in here. Okay, there'll be a template that's more specific than index.php called single.php. And if it, that exists and I'm looking at a single post, then it will use that. So again, I'm just going to duplicate my index.php file, and this one I'm going to rename single.php. Okay, and in this case, I'm going to delete the part where it outputs the sidebar. Okay, so now if I refresh this, now that I've got a single.php file in my uh, theme directory, given that I'm looking at a single post, it should use the single.php template file. Okay, and there it is, and it's not outputting that sidebar there. Um, now the other thing I might want to do here is there's this blank space here left by the sidebar. Okay, and I've got this um, content area is being um, okay is being given a width of 61% in order to leave space for that sidebar there. So given that that's no longer there, I probably want to override that style so that that content will then take up all of the um, horizontal space available to it. Um, so what I'm going to do in order to do that is just create a new style. Um, what I'll do is, um, so in my single.php file here, okay, I've got this section ID of main content, which is the one that has that style on it, main content, okay, and line 60 of my style sheet. What I'll do is I'll apply a class here called no sidebar. And then in my style sheet, I will create a more specific version of this main content style. So it'll be anything with the ID of main content, but also with the class of no sidebar. Then override the width to be auto, like that. Okay, so now that that's in there, I come back and refresh this page, all right, you can see that that 61% width there, it's got that line through, it's no longer being applied, okay, and the width is actually being applied by this more specific style here, main content with class and no sidebar with auto. Okay, so that's how we can deal with that situation, so that we can have the content area take up less room if we or less width if we need to have the sidebar or more width if we we don't need the sidebar okay so now we have the front page.php we have the um, single.php and we've got index.php for everything else okay as well as obviously our sidebar which we haven't done much with yet um, okay now the next um, the next type of template um, we'll look at is um, a page template. Now creating page templates is slightly different to creating any other type of template in that they're the only type of template that we can actually assign to something in the WordPress backend. Um, so once we've set this up, what we should be able to do is come into our pages section and let's say we go to the about me page, okay, and once we've set this up, once we've created some templates, we should be able to get a new, um, a new option here which is, allows us to select any of the page templates to apply here. Okay, so again, just to keep this simple, let's say Let's say I want to have a, um, a page template, or let, let's say I want to have two, two page templates, one which includes, so I've got, two, I've got two versions of my sidebar here, okay? Let's say I want to have a page template which includes sidebar one and a page template which includes sidebar two. So the default index.php file is already including sidebar two, okay? so let me duplicate that and I'll call this page underscore template um, 
sidebar two. Okay, now the important thing to note about page templates is that unlike any of these other templates where the name is very important because WordPress looks at the particular name of the file, for whatever reason WordPress doesn't do that with page templates. Instead, what it looks for is actually a comment section at the top of the template file, which looks like this here, which I've detailed on my blog page. Okay, so it's, it's a weird HTML comment and PHP comment combined. Okay, and you're meant to put it at the very top of your um, WordPress page template. Okay, and it will say template name colon and then this bit after here is where you set the name of the template. Okay, um, so I'm going to change this to um, sidebar 2 page. Okay, and then I'll duplicate that and create another one which will include sidebar 1. Okay, so this will be sidebar 1 page and down here rather than including sidebar S2 I'll include sidebar S1. So now I should have the option to basically output this same page with either sidebar 2 or sidebar 1 depending on which option I've selected in the back end here. So I should be able to refresh this now and I should hopefully get a new option here. Okay so you can see I now in this page attributes box here get a drop down which allows me to select any of the page templates that I've created. Okay so if I select sidebar 1 hit update and go back to this page I should see it output when it refreshes with the sidebar 1 content okay and in the same way if I select sidebar 2 okay and refresh it outputs with the sidebar 2 content okay and the default template if I leave that is just going to let it use the index.php template Okay, and I, I can continue this. I can change as much as I want. Maybe I just want a page template that has a different background color or, um, you know, has the sidebar on the left instead of the right or any other changes you want, you can make those. Um, so I could create a third page template here um, that has no sidebar. and I'll do the same thing I did with the single page. I'll just delete that sidebar and add a class here of no sidebar. And now when I apply that page template I can have a page that outputs with just the content and no sidebar. Okay so that's how you create control over um, your page templates. Um, Okay, now um, the last type of template that I want to look at is um, a template for uh, the categories. Okay, because while this output is okay, um, and th I think this output works reasonably well for the blog, what I'd really like to do is output the cats and the dogs categories as more of a gallery. So what I really want is just sort of the name of the dog or the cat and a picture thumbnail picture which I can then click on and it will go to a more detailed view of that post. Um, so in order to do that what I'm going to do is create um, a category template. Okay, So I'm going to create a category.php template that's more specific than the index.php template. Um, okay, so um, Again, I'll base this off my index.php template, but I'll call this category.php. Okay, and what I want to do is um, 
well, let's just refresh this for a moment. So what I really want to do is keep this, keep this, but get rid of that. Okay, for each of these. So you might think, okay, well, I'll just delete the content there so it no longer outputs the content. Okay, but if we do that, you'll see that the image is actually included within the post content. So now all I'm getting is the title and the, the, the date and the author. Um, so what I need to do here if I want to output the image without the text content is to use um, WordPress's featured images. Okay, so All right, so I have a section down here under heading of post thumbnails. Okay, they've changed the name of this. They keep flip-flopping between thumbnails and um, post thumbnails and featured images, but they, they mean the same thing. And I've actually got a separate video on just this topic because um, uh, it's probably one of the more complicated ones if you want to go back and look at that um, at any point. All right, but this is the link that I'm going to refer to because, again, we need to do some setup code to actually enable this feature in WordPress. Um, so I'll just show you before and after again. So if I go to any of my posts, all right, and let's just say I click one of these dog posts. Okay, what I'm looking for is when I enable this, I'll get an extra box down here which allows me to choose a featured image for the post, which I can output independent of any of the content. So in order to set that up, okay, I need to add again some code as it tells me here to my functions.php file. And in this case, it's just one simple line to enable it. And it's this one here, so I'll copy that across to my functions.php file. Now the order of this stuff in your functions.php file is not important, so it doesn't matter if I put that before or after. Okay, but this enables um, enables featured images in post. Okay, so we're going to add theme support post thumbnails. And then what we do is we set up one or more um, uh, thumbnail sizes for it to use. Okay, so um, if we go down a little bit further here to thumbnail sizes, okay, you can see there's a function um, that you can call called set post thumbnail size. No, sorry, actually the one we want to use is um, add image size here. Okay, so this is the function that we want to use. So we say add image size and then we give it a name so that we can use it to output within a template. And then we give it a, um, a width and a height and optionally a third value which if true um, crops the image and if false doesn't crop the image. Okay, so what I'm going to do in here is say add image size, give it a name. So in this case I'm going to call it category thumb, okay, and I'll give it a size. So in this case, I'm going to want it to be um, a 200 pixel by 200 pixel square. And I'm going to set the crop parameter to true so that if the, if the featured image itself is not already a square, that it will crop off either the top and the bottom or the left and the right in order for it to fit. Um, into a nice square. All right, and I could um, I could create more of these. So let's just say I wanted to create another one, which I call large thumb. Okay, which I use for outputting somewhere else, and maybe I make that 400 wide by 200 tall, and maybe I don't crop it. Okay, so then I've got two different um, styles of thumbnails that I can output anywhere in my template files. Okay, but for my purposes, I'm only going to use one, so I'll just leave that first one there. Okay, so now that we've got that in there, the add theme support post thumbnails, I can go back to my um, post edit post screen in WordPress, and when I refresh this, okay, I now get the featured image box. Um, now, again, because I'd already previously set this up, there's a featured image already in there, but when you create a new post, um, there'll be nothing there. Okay, so all you do is hit set featured image, 
and then you can apply any image that you've already uploaded or upload new files. Okay, and in this case, I'm using the same image that's in the content of the post as my featured image, but there's no reason you have to do that. So let's just say in the context of your portfolio, maybe you have a whole bunch of images of your work in here, and they might be quite big. And so rather than using a really big version and sizing it down, maybe you just want to select an interesting area of that image and use that as the featured image for the thumbnail. Or a completely different image. I mean, there's no reason you have to, that. There's no reason that this image has to exist in in the post to use it as a featured image. Um, okay, so I've set that there now, and because I set this up previously again, so I don't have to do it now. All all these other ones I've gone through and I've set the featured image. Okay, so now that they have those, I should be able to go back to my template file. Okay, for my category.php and inside of my post content here, now I should be able to um, do a um, WordPress function call um, called the post thumbnail. All right, and I simply pass it one of the, the thumbnail names that I set up here. Okay, and in this case, I've only got one category thumb. So I'll put that in there. Okay, and that should output then in that part of the HTML template, that should output for me um, an image an image tag with the source to that um, thumbnail in that particular size and configuration that I specified in here. Okay, 200 by 200 pixels cropped. Okay, so let's see if that's worked. All right, so I'm still in the category cats here. All right, and there you can see is the 200 by 200 pixel cropped version of that image. Okay, so some of these images, well, most of these images aren't perfect squares, so this is a good one in particular to look at. Okay, so you can see this one, the image is quite long, so so that that will fit nicely in, in the layout, okay, that cropping function allows them to output like this. Okay, so that's a little bit more like what I want. Um, now the only other thing I would really change is um, I want I just want to update the CSS of this so that um, it lays out in more of a gallery, okay? And again, because there's a fair bit of um, styling to write to get this to look how I want it, I'm just going to copy the um, styles across from my finished example. Okay, so from about here to here. All right, so these are these are just some styles to lay it out in a um, sort of Polaroid gallery looking thing, um, and I will copy across the completed version of the category template as well, just because I need to add a few more container divs um, to fit all these things. Okay, but the important parts where I'm outputting the content remain unchanged. Okay, so if this has worked, hopefully. All right, so we get something more like this. Okay, so um, so that's now um, the post content and the title are still what's being output. Okay, down here the title, but it's the CSS that's styling it to look like this. Okay, and the same style will um, work for the dogs category as well. Okay, and um, um, when I click on one, okay, it's still going to use the single.php post, okay? So the single.php post still shows me the title and then the full content. Okay, now one, one bad thing that's happened here now is that if I go now and look at my blog, okay, I see that my blog has taken on the same template. Okay, because my blog post is still just a category. Okay, blog is a category of posts. So I've got this 
So it's going to use category.php here. And so while this is a good way of displaying this content, it's a horrible way of displaying blog content, okay? Because this tells me nothing um, about the content. So what I can do here is create a specific category template for the blog which reverts it back to a style more similar to how it was. Okay, so again, if I refer to the um, template hierarchy here, okay, I can see here's my category.php file, okay, which it's using in preference to the index.php. But I can actually create even more specific versions of that category.php file, either using the category ID or what's called the category slug here. Now the category slug, I'll explain what that is. If I go and look at my category section here, okay, then you'll notice here are all my categories. And I can create a new category here. Uh, let's say it's called marsupials. Alright, and I can either create my own slug, or if I don't, it will automatically generate one for me. And what you'll notice is that essentially the slug is just a URL friendly version of the name. Um, and what it will do is it will convert everything to lowercase, and if you have any spaces or other um, non-URL friendly characters, it will replace them with hyphens. Okay, but all you need to know is what is the actual slug for the category. So in the case of the blog, okay, the slug is just blog in all lowercase. So what that means is I can create a um, template called category-blog category all lowercase.php and because in the template hierarchy that's more specific than category.php then it will use that for the blog instead of the generic category one that it's using for cats and dogs. Okay, so again, I want my blog to be similar to my index template layout, so I'm going to duplicate that again. And I'll call this category-blog.php. Okay, there it is. And When I refresh this, okay, as long as I'm on the blog category, you should see that it will start using category blog. Okay, there it is. All right, but dogs and cats still get just category. Now I could go and create a specific category dash dogs and category dash cats template file, but there's no reason to do that because they're exactly the same. So I just let them both fall back to the default category.php template. Now I would only override the blog with the more specific one. Um, okay, so that is category templates. Now, um, what? So now, what we'll look at um, now is something that's very similar. But um, let's say we want to create a template for specific tags. Now, I haven't actually output the tags anywhere. So, what I'm going to do is go back into my single.php file. And I'm going to output the tags using this small bit of code here. So again, it's just a WordPress call to a function, the tags, and then you give it something to prepend with, and then also separate multiple tags, and then we'll output all the tags that that post has. So that's in my single.php file. So if I refresh this now, you can see the tags that this particular post has. Okay, so in this case it'll either be short hair or long hair. Um, now when I click on one of these tags, okay, again you can see that it's defaulting to use index.php, but I can also create a specific um, style for the tags um, by just call, creating a template called tag.php. So it makes sense to me that this is going to display similar content to the category template, even though it's got um, content across those categories. So I want it to display that, that gallery layout again, so I'm just going to duplicate category.php and call it tag.php. Alright, and now whenever I'm looking at a tag, it will use that template as well. Okay, so this I guess highlights 
um, the difference between categories and tags, okay? So categories will only show you the post in a particular category, okay, whether it be cats or dogs, but tags will show you anything across any category that has that particular tag. Okay, so this is all either cats or dogs tagged with um, short hair, um, and this is all either cats or dogs tagged with long hair. Okay, so now in terms of which is more useful, I, I don't know if I mentioned this, but it's important to remember in terms of when you're creating a menu, okay, if you want to actually have links to something on a menu, um, it's not it doesn't make it easy for you to do it with tags, but it does make it easy for you to do it with categories. So when it comes about, when it comes to thinking about whether to use categories or tags um, to um, to delineate your content across your site, if you do want to have a menu link to um, a particular section, then you probably are going to want to use categories for that um, rather than tags. Okay, but as you can see here, there's no reason why you can't use can't use both if, if you need to. Um, okay, so that's that's tags. Now, there's just a couple more things I want to talk about. Okay, um, there's this section here I've got about um, the WordPress body class. Okay, and this is a really simple but really useful um, feature that can reduce the number of templates that you might need to create. So let's just say, let's just say, um, depending on which section of the site that I'm on, I want to change the color of the header and the footer. So if I'm on the cat section, let's say I change this to be blue. If I'm on the dog section, I'll change it to be green and everything else I'll just keep as purple. Okay, so one way of doing that would be to create a separate cats and dogs category template and then create separate header and footer templates and include um, the green header, green footer, blue header, blue footer into either of those category templates. Okay, but that means we have to create quite a lot more um, template files. We can get away with not doing that when it's simple styling changes. So if, if you don't want to change the content that's being output, but you just want to change um, the, the styles that are applied, then you can use this um, body class function to let you do that. So if I look at, if I inspect the code here at the moment, and I look at the body class, or I look at the body tag, sorry, there's one class that's applied here called customize support, and I think that's possibly being uh, inserted by a plugin. Um, but you'll probably have nothing output here when you first do this. Um, but regardless of that, there's nothing here that allows me to um, allows me to specifically style something based on what page that I'm on. So what I can do is go back into my header.php template file. And here's my opening body tag here. And what I'm going to do is call a WordPress function called um, body class, like this. OK, and when I do that, I come back and refresh the page, you'll notice that it outputs a whole bunch of classes that are useful for determining what part of the site you're on. Okay, so when I'm looking at the cats category, I get classes archive, category, category dash cats, category dash two, so that will be the category ID. I also get things like logged in, so you could style a page differently whether a user's logged in or logged out. Um, it tells me that the admin bar is visible, and then I've got wherever that's coming from, probably a plugin as well. Okay, and then, so if I click over to dogs, you'll notice that I get the same deal, but it's category dogs here. So now that I can see that I've got those two things, I could style this a different color based on whether that header section comes under the body with the class of category dogs or category cats, okay, or just anything else. Um, now, incidentally, let's just say you wanted to also have your own class written in here. Um, all you do to add that is 
pass it as a parameter to the body class function. Okay, so if I do that, all right, then I can see that um, my own class there gets added to the list of classes. Okay, and you have to do it that way because you can't have two separate class attributes on the body tag. I couldn't just write it out here like that. Okay, but the important thing is this allows us now to style that differently without creating a whole bunch of new um, template files. So what I really have to do is uh, modify my style.css now. And again, I'm just going to copy these over from my finished example. So here's the style that by default um, makes the header and footer um, that purple gradient color. Okay, and all I'm going to do is add um, an extra style here which more specifically overrides if that header is under the body with a class of category cats or category dogs and same deal for the footer which makes it a blue gradient for the cats and a green gradient for the dogs. So I'll copy those across. Okay, copy those across into my theme style.css and now, okay, if I refresh when I'm on the dogs page, okay, again, we can look at how this is being applied in our development tools. There's the header here. Okay, so you can see there's the default style for header and footer. Okay, is being overridden, obviously. Okay, it's struck, in, it's struck out there. Um, and there's the more specific dot .category dogs header style, which is overriding it to be green. Okay, and I'll get the same thing if I go to the cats category. And then everything else, which doesn't have a body class of category cats or category dogs, is just going to inherit the um, default purple gradient style. Okay, so that saved me creating a good four, five, six other template files. Okay, so when I guess when you're asking yourself, do I need to create a new template, um, if all you want to change is um, things that can be changed with the CSS, then you should be able to just get away with using the, the body class, but if you actually want to output different content, then you probably want to create a new template file. Um, okay. Now, um, there's a couple more style changes that I need to make here. Um, I'll just try and put those in quickly. Okay, so, okay, that's better. So I just had to um, copy across the styles and the new background image that I wanted for this um, gallery layout as well. Okay, so, what else do we have still to look at? Okay, so, we still haven't really done much with the sidebar here, okay? It's still displaying our static content. Um, but the the real usefulness of a sidebar um, comes with when we can actually use it with our WordPress widgets. So we could just use it to put whatever content we want in there, but, um, but a much more useful way of using it, um, as I just said, is to use it with widgets. But again, this requires um, a little bit of setup code. Okay, so I, I've got this section here creating widgetized sidebar on my blog post. And we want to get an interface that looks like this. Okay, which allows us to drag and drop widgets to a particular sidebar. Um, so, in order to do that,
Okay, again, we need some um, we need some setup code first of all. Okay, and because it's going to be a little bit specific to my theme, I'm going to copy this across from my completed example again. Um, but I will explain what the code does. Okay, so this section of code here sets up um, so that WordPress knows that I want to have two separate sidebars. Okay, and again it takes this pattern of using add action, okay, at a particular point, and in this case we tell it to do it at this point in the startup called widgets init, and then I call this function register my sidebars. Okay, and then inside of there I call this WordPress function register sidebar twice, okay, once for each sidebar. And then the, the properties that I pass it in the array, okay, are the name, okay, so I'll give the sidebar a name, um, an ID that can be used, and then these last four are optional, but they allow you to um, wrap each widget in a bit of HTML for styling purposes. So I'm saying here, every time a widget's output in the sidebar, put it inside of a div with a class of widget so that I can use that for styling. And then also the title of the widget, wrap that inside of a heading two. Okay, and then this one's identical, except I'm calling it sidebar two. All right, so this whole block of code allows me to register two sidebars. And once I've got that in there, um, and I refresh this, you should see a new option come up called widgets. Okay, so there it is there, and I click on that. Okay, and there's the two sidebars that I've told it to set up. Okay, sidebar one and sidebar two. Okay, you can give them more meaningful names than that when if you have them and they actually you know, do something useful. Okay, but once we're here, you've got a nice drag and drop interface for um, applying widgets to a sidebar. Okay, so for example, let's say sidebar one, I want to have a search field and a list of um, categories and maybe um, recent posts. Actually, let's put that on the second one, recent post and a tag cloud. Okay, so you just drag and drop them similar to how you create the menu. Um, and then we save all these. Okay, and now we can use those to be out outputting that dynamic content on our sidebars. But there's still one more step in that we need to change our actual sidebar templates. Okay, so all I'm going to do is delete all of this, um, all of this static content from the sidebar, and in my sidebar S1, I'm going to call a function dynamic sidebar, and then I'm simply going to put in I'm simply going to put in either of the names that I've created for the sidebars here. Okay, so sidebar one or sidebar two. So for sidebar S1 template, I'll use sidebar one. Okay, and for my second sidebar template, I'll tell it to put in all the widgets from sidebar two. Okay, so now we should be able to go back to any of our pages and, okay, so we're on our blog now and the blog is using sidebar two. So when I refresh, I should see output uh, a calendar and a list of recent posts as widgets. Okay, there we go. Okay, so there's my calendar widget here and this is um, designed to link you and show you um, just posts that are posted on a particular date. Now in my case I created all of these on the 1st of September so that's going to show everything but if I added new posts now then I could just isolate the post from a particular date. And this widget here, the recent post widget, logically enough shows me a list of my um, five most recent posts. Okay, now if I go to uh, another page which is using a different sidebar, and let's just say I change my front page to call sidebar one instead of sidebar two. 
Okay, then I get the widgets that are output in sidebar one. Okay, so I get the search widget here, which I can um, use to search things. I get a list of categories, so this is another way I could output a sort of menu structure. Okay, and I get a tag list, so um, which will link me to the tags as well. Um, so, I mean, these are pretty arbitrary and don't make much sense in this context, but I mean, you can see how uh, on my blog site, for example, I've used these sorts of things. So, I've got the this categories drop down list here and a tags cloud, okay, where the, the more posts there are about tagged with a certain thing, then the bigger it is, okay, so I can go and look at all of my posts across all categories tagged with information design, for example. Okay, so in this context it makes sense. Um, one of the other widgets that's really useful is this meta widget here, which will actually provide you links, quick links to the um, site admin and login, for example. Okay, so you can quickly get to your dashboard without having to go up to the um, up to the address bar and type in WP admin there. Um, now this search one, this search one um, is really useful because it lets you, it does all of the, the back end search stuff for you. So I can then search for any post or page any bit of content that contains a particular search term. And in this case I've searched for cat. Um, now what you can do if you do want to have a search area on your on your page, you can create a template um, for the search results as well. So let's say instead of using the index.php page, I'll create a search.php template and all I'll change is rather than outputting the content, I'll output um, the excerpt like that. Okay, and then any search results, all right, if we go back here. Uh, ah, yes, thank you. That would be why. Okay, try that again. Do a search. Okay, and now it's using search.php. All right, and it's just showing the excerpt. Okay, but you again, you can have it display absolutely anything that you want on any of these templates. And as I said, you just use as many, I mean, you can see the WordPress template hierarchy that I've used nowhere near even a fraction of all of these. And as I, I've sort of said before in my lecture, you just use whichever ones you need to represent the different sections of your site. And so we've been able to create quite a few different sections with just a handful of templates here and you reuse them where it makes sense to reuse them and you create new ones where it makes sense to create new ones. Um, just, just one last thing on the widgets. Um, widgets are actually a class of plugins so while you get um, while you get a, um, a, a few built-in ones, okay, you can always add your own as well. So if you look at the plugins and um, you add a new one, um, Okay, you can search for ones with a particular tag here. So you'll notice that you click on widget. Okay, you'll see all sorts of different widgets here. Okay, so um, that do all sorts of different things. So that's a, it's a really useful way of, of getting um, functionality without having to do too much work. So particularly when it comes to doing things like um, I like your social networking plugins and stuff. A good way of doing those is just to get a social networking widget, and then you just type your um, type your information to connect to that in there, and it, and it can display your feed or link to your particular pages and all that sort of thing. So my advice is, if if you're thinking of doing anything in in WordPress where you've seen someone else do it before, or you think it might be a common thing. Have a look for a plugin or a widget to do it before you decide to go and spend the time doing it yourself because um, more often than not you'll find that that's, that um, something already exists. Okay, and there's thousands and thousands of them out there. Um, okay, one last thing that I want to show you is um, this section here, I talk about friendly URLs. 
So you'll notice on my blog, for example, the difference between what the URLs look like on this test theme. Okay, so to access this About Me page, it's using the get parameter page ID equals 54. Okay, and and for categories, cat equals 2, cat equals 3 for dog, cat equals 4 for blog. Okay, we can have this print out as something that's more sort of human friendly. Okay, and I have something like that on my blog here. So you can see when I'm looking at some content, rather than having a not very meaningful ID number, it's actually telling me that it's in a category called KRB216 and then um, it's giving me the the um, the subcategory, okay, so the, the tutorials and then the week six tutorials. Okay, and then if I even if I click on a particular um, post name, okay, ending with the post name itself. Um, so you can enable that quite easily in any WordPress installation by going to the settings section and permalinks. Okay, and so as you can see, the default is to use just sort of that, those, those get parameters like this. Okay, but you can select any of these pre-defined um, options like this, or you can create your own custom structure. Okay, and to, to find out what, and basically you, you use tags that sort of look like this. So you go, okay, I want it to look like the URL and then forward slash, and then you use tags that look like this. Okay, so percentage and then something meaningful related to WordPress and then a percentage to close that off. Now the tags that are available to you, there's a link to these here, okay, and it will tell you all of the tags that you can use. So you can sort things or you can name things based on the the chronology, okay, if that's meaningful to your post, so the year and the, the day and the hour and the second and all of that, or you can use the post ID, the post name, the category or the author, for example. So the way that I generally like to set it up is to use this structure here, okay, where it lists the URL and then forward slash the category and then forward slash the post name. So if I save those changes there, then I refresh this page, okay, so now you can see it says category slash blog, okay, or category slash dogs, and if I click on a particular one, okay, dog slash and then the name of the post there. Okay, so that has a couple of benefits. One, it's more readable, and if someone wants to come back to this and type it in, it's easier to remember to type about me than it is um, page ID equals 54. Okay, but the other thing is it um, um, actually makes it uh, easier for um, search engines to index your site as well. So it has a couple of benefits there.